Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, hopefully you listened to the interview I did with Carney Andrews. He has a new book, Erratic, that's out right now from AWA Artists, Writers, and Artisans, uh, which does not roll off the tongue, but AWA does. Uh, at any rate, it's part of the upshot part of this, uh, this, this label and this brand. And it's a five issue series. It's really worth checking out. Uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely and, and there's plenty of comics I enjoy and don't enjoy. But I, I, I so before I get started with this review, I want to preface this by saying that uh, uh, first off, I did read this comic and enjoyed it before talking uh, to Mr. Andrews. So uh, definitely that that's not influencing my decision here. I've been a fan of his art for quite a while and I do like what he's done. Not everybody does it right, but when the writer and the artist is the same, you can you can kind of tell the people where it works and where it doesn't work. I think it worked very well with Sean Gordon Murphy in the White Knight universe. You feel like there's a, a benefit to one person doing all those. I think there's other cases where it, it hasn't worked, where maybe it's a, an artist who always wanted to write. I think some of the original image launch books really kind of underscore that point of, of some of these people are not are not writers and they, they shouldn't. Uh, they, they just, they shouldn't write. Um, they should stick to, to doing the art. But in case of Kari Andrews, I think he, he does manage to do both together. And I like seeing what he come up, what comes up with. So this book, um, uh, first off, I should say that, uh, one of the things that I mentioned in the interview, and I think, uh, kind of really underscores here is that AWA, which launched in the middle of the pandemic, uh, it had, was setting up a kind of a bigger universe. It's this idea, this upstart, upshot, shared universe where there was an inciting event, uh, a pandemic, just <laughs> as it happens, that basically left uh, people in the population dead and others with powers. And it was kind of this, this genesis point to this universe. And it's, it's a novel idea. I think it would have been a little bit more novel and refreshing and probably well-received if it, if it didn't launch during a pandemic. Um, however, it's it's ambitious. The problem is it's been swallowed up with all the noise of the comic industry being in a bit of trouble, and then there was a shutdown, and there were some interruptions, and then books got going again. And it's almost like AWA in general needs a a restart because uh, they've they've kind of they put some initial marketing came out, they didn't get the buzz off of the marketing because it's just so hard to get anything communicated during that time period, and now they really have to come back to the table and try again. So. This book comes out, it ties into that shared universe. I mentioned it's five issue series. And it's um, it, the, the hook is kind of relatively simple. There's somebody and they have powers, um, but they're 15 and their powers last basically 10 minutes a day. They get 10 minutes of, of power a day and then that's it. And so what can you do with that 10 minutes? How can you uh, kind of live in this world where you know you, you can do amazing things, but only for a short period of time? What does that do to change? And and in the midst of being 15. So uh, this issue is going to draw some comparisons to Spider-Man. And there is kind of that feel to it. When I picked it up and, and started reading it, it reminded me a lot of a re original kind of early Spider-Man when he was uh, in high school or, you know, and, and he was kind of exploring his world and awkward and, and all the other things. And there's certainly a lot of comparisons here to that. But it also feels like a comic that's done in modern, you know, for modern times. Uh, written by somebody who actually understands what modern times are. One of the frustrations I have with a lot of titles that that try and capture kind of the spirit of high school is that it's capturing either this idealized, not accurate view of, of high school. It's like somebody watched The Breakfast Club but once upon a time and you're like, hey, I'll just use some contemporary language and it, it all works. It's all the same. Or maybe they're trying to recreate fast times at Ridgemont High without really realizing what the kind of the, the, the character motivations and drivers were in that, in that movie. It just, it, the, whenever people try and do, and I think this is true, by the way, for a lot of YA, YA stuff as well, it does not, it doesn't feel like anything that somebody who's actually, you know, a young adult would read or would be reflective of their world at all. And there's a bunch of announcements we've had this week and last week for a bunch of titles that, that sound it's like, oh, a, a kid's rebelling by being goth. I, I, that's not what kids do to rebel in 2020. That wasn't what kids did to rebel in 2010. And it, it, so it seems all very, very fictional. So as we get into this comic, uh, what's interesting is that uh, our, our, our hero is Oliver Leaf. 
He's got a mom who's a single mom and he has a, uh, a brother who's more popular than he is. A lot of kind of very typical things. The first page will feel like the first day of school for that you've seen a million times before. But the differences are we get into kind of the other kids in school and the kids in school feel accurate. It, it does not feel, it feels like the same kind of social outcast thing we've seen before, but it's a little bit more cutting, a little bit uh, tougher for this kid than what you would, you know, what, what you read in other places. Because in this case, the, the kind of dynamic with, you know, the other students, the other uh, boys and girls in this, this school and the teachers, everything seems uh, foreign, everything seems unwelcoming. And you really communicate this idea that this, this kid in this school, it's not, it's not a good thing. Kids also harboring a secret. What is that secret? Well, it, it ties into his powers and that's what we're going to get to. So the comic uh, takes us through the first day of school, kind of meeting some new people, not really fitting in, um, being kind of discouraged, seeing the dynamic of the brother who is, you know, basically, uh, you know, easily fitting in from very, from day one. And uh, we, we it references the uh, kind of big overarching AWA event of people who have died. They, they're talking about the people who didn't make it through the great death. And so it, it, this comic is helped if you've read the other AWA stuff. It feels like you're reading part of a bigger universe, but it's not necessary. You're not going to be confused. You're not going to be disjointed if you didn't get that. But it does create an emotional tie as Oliver is looking at these people who did die, thinking it could have been him. It, it is reinforcing this idea that that, uh, you know, he was lucky in the midst of being surrounded by people who do not fit, who are that, that he, he just doesn't fit into this world. And yet he's also thinking he's fortunate from having survived this this death and, and winding up where he is. We then go to the classes, and the classes are uh, was a, was a nice surprise in the um, in the sense that these teachers are doing. Uh, the interview said it really well, and Carrie Andrews did a really good job of explaining kind of this this mentality of this oppressive kind of we're going to mold these kids, we're going to beat them down, and, and kind of form them into a a, a state where they're just they're going to conform and kind of roll out an assembly line out of the school. Um, but the difference is it's a different kind of assembly line these days. So the, the teachers, um, you know, going in, there will be no grades in science. The experience of science is most important. Lots of hugs. Who wants to ban some books? Um, it completely to this, uh, this new social studies where there's a, a guy with a, a portrait of Mao up on the wall. And, uh, and this, this kind of, you know, this, this imprisoned <laughs> kind of class. Um, and it, it is, it is a, it's a very off putting, uh, environment, which gets you as the reader to feel a little bit like the student that there is, there is definitely a, a, a world that they don't belong in a world that they're, they're being part of. Um, and it's, uh, it, it, it is interesting. So, we also see this this girl that uh, the Oliver is immediately taken with, and she's kind of threaded into into several moments throughout the comic. We see her coming in, coming out, and and he's he's definitely attracted to her, or at least has an interest in her. Um, we we get a little bit of a pickup with the mom of you know she's basically moved her family to a new location under some false pretenses, and that she's down on her luck. Everything, nothing is working out terribly well. Nothing. And so as this, uh, as this boy is kind of contemplating, um, you know, his father and, and kind of the sadness of, of, you know, losing his father or his father being out of the picture, um, just again, not fitting in, um, you know, the contrast to his brother, who's like on the first day immediately kind of on the football team has a letter jacket, everything is, is working out. It's, it's a contrast. Um, we we get to a little bit of a, a, a segue uh, with the social studies teacher and the principal and and kind of maybe the social studies teacher has some powers and and what he's going to, what is he going to do with that uh, kind of the sinister subplot. Um, but as as our issue starts to wrap up, uh, we we've, we've been taken through this journey of this kid. Uh, we get a disaster in the town, some level of earthquake or this giant 
what looks like a metal plus kind of organic uh, monster that's come emerged out of the ground. And we get for the first time to see his powers. So he's got to save the girl. In this case, the girl he was attracted to this entire time. He's got to save her and somehow get out of this situation, defeat this, this giant robot squid like thing, this, this huge monster, uh, save the kids, get them to safety. And, uh, and that, and, and he does it, he has to do it within this very short time period. And there's a sense of tenseness, even though this bit is very quick, it adds to kind of the, the energy and the scene is drawn with more expressive colors and, and just a lot of, of energy. So you, you had this book, that was really kind of the, the mindless numbing part of school into this kind of very energetic scene where the action finally comes out. And uh, Oliver kind of knowing that, uh, you know, it basically pleads to them, don't tell anyone. He can't tell anyone. If they find out, they'll come for me. It'll ruin my family. It'll ruin my life. Please don't do it. He runs off. And, uh, you know, the, the girl is kind of watches him go and say, oh, my God, you know, did you record this? And she's like, yep, you bet I did. And she uploads the video uh, up to to VidTube and and this is going to go viral and and using uh, they, you know, we we don't know where the second issue is going yet but basically this idea of like hey this is uh, this is going to help her out and it's, it's this last kind of last little twist where um, she appeared to be on friendly terms appeared to be somebody who maybe our hero could bond with maybe could be part of a, a you know an an, or, an an organism that would help build him up to to give him something confident but it looks like instead she's going to make his life worse and just it continues this trap feeling of everything is against him which is very much like in the sense of of the parker luck of, of spider-man who was constantly fighting the odds but uh but the world kept getting stacked against him this is this is that and then some it's it's really very heavy on things are things are not okay and how will our hero survive it it's a good first issue it's five issues um i i wish i always hate these five issue things maybe six just i, I don't know that's the obsessive compulsive in me i think it's cool i think it reinforces awa has some good books out there they they really do they have they're they're completely under the radar at this point and this fits in with all that i think it i'm excited to see where it goes I like the introduction of a hero. What surprised me is that this, the writing of this character and how it all kind of comes about feels much more authentic and true than what the, and certainly the big two, what a lot of others are doing when they're trying to write about kids or trying to write about that teen experience, the YA experience. This is definitely not a YA book by any stretch of the imagination. And yet it seems to nail the kid experience way better than than other books do i it's it's good stuff i recommend it highly i hope you check it out it's a very solid book uh thank you again to Kari andrews for coming on and being able to talk to me about it and everything else uh, I, I hope you check it out and i hope you give this company a little chance there's some there's some good stuff in there and i i'm, I'm a sucker for comics that try things different this tries something different and delivers a good story both so i hope you try it uh otherwise let me know if you read this issue if you find it you go pick it up it is worth your time. Uh, I would do it. Uh, otherwise, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Most importantly, though, and as always, thanks for listening. Oh, hey, oh actually, one more thing. Ah, sorry. Um, it, it goes without saying, Kari Andrews did a great job on this book, but Brian Reber, uh, who is the colorist on this, uh, also is just tremendous on this. And, uh, and it, it's really really should be said that uh, Reber's colors look really dynamic and good. And, and there's a lot of it just is a good looking book and, um, and much credit goes to Brian Reber. So well done there. Uh, there you go. Now, thanks for listening.